Hi, it's Tom here and welcome to another Gradle best practice tip. And this time I'd like to recommend that you always execute the right task for the job. And what exactly do I mean by this? Well, in Gradle we have the concept of the task graph and this describes how all the different tasks are related to each other and what dependencies they have. And what I'm saying here is that we should be very specific about what we want to do with our build at any particular time and execute the specific task and make sure that no unnecessary tasks get run. And to show you what I mean here, here's a simple Java project. It has the Java plugin applied. And if you think about the different scenarios we might have for interacting with our build, then here are three different options. We might just need to compile the classes. We might want to make sure that our Java code is syntactically correct. We might want to run the tests to make sure that functionally it's correct. Or we might just want to build everything, including compiling the code, running the tests, and also creating distribution jars or anything else that's required to deploy our application. And in all these cases, you may be tempted to run the build task, which as you can see here, compiles the classes, processes resources, creates a jar file, compiles test classes, processes test resources, and also runs the tests themselves. And in the scenario where we want to run the whole build, for example, on a CI server, then this is great. But what about if we just want to compile the Java classes? Well, the best way to understand this is by actually seeing this task graph itself and the relationships between the different tasks. And one way you can do this is by applying this plugin here, just goes in the plugins block. And with this in place, we can run Gradle W TI tree and then whatever task we want to see the task graph for. And in this case, I want to see it for build. So it's printed out here our task graph or tree, whatever you want to call it. And at the root of this tree is the build task that we've just seen. And moving to the right, these dotted lines imply a depends on relationship. So the build task depends on assemble and it also depends on check. So that means that when we run the build task, we're also running assemble and check. And not only that, but we're also running any dependencies of assemble and check. So for example, assemble depends on jar, which depends on classes, which actually compiles the code. And under check, it does a whole load of stuff too. It runs the tests, it compiles the production code, and it also compiles the test classes. So with this information, we can be a bit more specific about what we want to do. So in the scenario where we just want to compile code, we can run this classes task. And that means that we're not unnecessarily generating a jar file and also compiling and running the tests. So let's run Gradle W. And I want to run the clean task first because I want to clean the build directory. And let's run classes. And that took one second. Now let's compare this to what we did before. So we'll do clean and build. And this took two seconds. So it's not exactly going to change your world in this particular project, but hopefully you can see there's a difference here. And if you scale this up to something more than this simple project, a larger project, then that could make a big difference. And to illustrate this, I've cloned the popular Spring Boot framework. And what we're going to do is run and assemble to see how long that takes and compare it to what happens if we just run the classes task just to compile the code. So let's run Gradle W space clean space assemble. And to be honest, I do have the feeling that this is going to take quite a long time. So I'm just going to go and take a nap. So you just wait there a sec. See you in a bit. Okay, we're all done here. Well, my fan's going crazy. Must have been a big job. It took four minutes and 15 seconds. So if we think about the scenario where all we want to do is just compile the code to ensure it's syntactically correct, then that's quite a long time. So why don't we try instead running classes and see if it's any quicker. So Gradle W clean classes, see if we can beat four minutes, 15 seconds. Wow, okay, so to compile all the production code in the Spring Boot application is 20 seconds. 
That's a big improvement on the 4 minutes 15 seconds we had before. And of course, it's worth pointing out that in Gradle we do have features such as the incremental build and also the build cache that actually mean that if you do end up running the same task multiple times or unnecessarily, then it's not a big deal because it actually runs pretty quickly. But I think the main point to take away is that having knowledge about the different tasks in your build and how they relate to each other can help you be more effective by being explicit about what you want to achieve in your build. And if you're interested to learn more about the Gradle fundamentals, like the task graph that we talked about earlier, then why not check out my introductory Gradle course? It's called Get Going with Gradle. It's free, and you can find the link just up here. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in another Gradle best practice tip.